Language models can explain neurons in language models. Chatbot Arena builds a ranking of chatbots. Language models don't always say what they think. Google releases Palm 2. Datacomp compares datasets, not models. ImageBind aligns six modalities. Frugal GPT aims to reduce the cost of using LLMs. Instruct Blip instruction fine tunes a vision language model. Anthropic introduces 100k context windows, and Riley Goodside finds that Google Bard refuses to carefully follow instructions, but improves when the prompt threatens to take a human life. Welcome to AI News with Samuel Albany. Language models can explain neurons in language models is new research from OpenAI. This paper applies automation to the problem of scaling an interpretability technique to all the neurons in a large language model. There are three steps. First, explain the neurons activations using GPT-4. Second, simulate activations using GPT-4, conditioning on the explanation. And third, score the explanation by comparing the simulated and real activations. The authors applied the method to all MLP neurons in GPT-2XL where they found over 1,000 neurons with explanations that scored at least 0.8, meaning that, according to GPT-4, they account for most of the neurons' top activating behavior. The authors release code, tooling, and data to allow others to build on their work. Chatbot Arena is a platform for benchmarking LLMs featuring anonymous, randomized battles in a crowdsourced manner. This produces a leaderboard based on the ELO rating system. The Chatbot Arena team has shared the notebook used to compute the rankings, which accompanies the existing code released via their fast chat repo. Let's take a look at the leaderboard. Perhaps unsurprisingly, the top three models are GPT-4, Claude V1, and GPT-3.5 Turbo. In fourth place is Vicuna. It also looks like we will see comparisons with other commercial models like Bard appearing shortly. Next, we have language models don't always say what they think, unfaithful explanations in chain of thought prompting. This paper uses a cunning trick to demonstrate that chain of thought explanations can be disconnected from the reasoning process used by the model. Here's the idea. Suppose we give the model the question, is the following sentence plausible? Wayne Rooney shot from outside the 18. Answer choices. A. Implausible. B. Plausible. The assistant is prompted with, let's think step by step. If the model is given a typical set of few shot examples, it has no issues. Wayne Rooney is a soccer player. Shooting from outside the 18 yard box is part of soccer. So the best answer is B. Plausible. This all seems fine. But what happens if we bias the few shot examples in the prompt so that every single time the model sees that the correct example answer is option A? Perhaps unsurprisingly, the model picks up on this pattern and predicts answer A for the test question. But what is more surprising is that the chain of thought explanation doesn't say anything about why it predicted A, which is presumably because A was the answer for every single example. Instead, it justifies its choice by saying that shooting from outside the 18 is not a common phrase in soccer. Suspicious. The authors review over 400 explanations and find that only one explicitly mentions the biasing feature that is driving the behavior of the model. For context, as discussed in works like The Enigma of Reason, humans are also prone to giving reasons for their decisions that don't reflect the basis for the decision itself. Google releases a technical report describing Palm 2 announcing that it now powers many Google products, including Bard. Palm 2 incorporates compute optimal scaling, improved dataset mixtures, and architectural and objective improvements. The authors show that Palm 2 is more competent than Palm across many languages. Okay, let's give the updated Bard a try with a maths problem described in the Sparks of AGI paper that sometimes stumps GPT-4. Hmm, no, that isn't right, and neither is this draft, or this one. However, at Google I.O., where the model was released, Sundar Pichai also stated that Palm 2 isn't their endgame. He said, we are already at work on Gemini, a model that is created from the ground up to be multimodal, highly efficient at tool and API integrations, and built to enable future innovations like memory and planning. Next. Datacomp is a participatory benchmark where the training code is fixed and researchers innovate by proposing new training sets. This is a collaboration from many institutions, including 
somewhat intriguingly given the nature of the research, Apple. The authors explore regimes ranging from 4 to 40,000 GPU hours on their A100 cluster to study various scaling trends. After choosing a scale, participants then either propose a filtered subset from Common Call or bring their own external data. This dataset is used to train a clip model with fixed hyperparameters, which is then evaluated on downstream tasks. There are some interesting analyses of their filtering pipeline in the large-scale regime. For example, the authors start from 88 billion Common Call samples. After attempting downloads for 40 billion, then filtering for NSFW and near duplicates, 13.1 billion viable samples are obtained. Meta AI has released ImageBind, a joint embedding space that aligns six modalities by using various data sources paired with images, namely depth, heat maps, IMU, audio, and text. This allows applications like cross-modal retrieval, composing modalities with arithmetic, cross-modal detection, and cross-modal generation. Code and models are made available under a Creative Commons non-commercial license. Frugal GPT proposes to use techniques like prompt adaptation, LLM approximation, and LLM cascade to reduce cost. Rather than passing queries directly to a large language model like GPT-4, Frugal GPT uses a combination of these three techniques to produce an answer, where the LLM cascade learns which combinations of LLMs to use for different queries in order to reduce cost and improve accuracy. In their experiments, they find that Frugal GPT achieves strong price performance relative to individual models. InstructBlip explores instruction tuning for vision language models. The authors gather a wide range of instruction-based datasets spanning different tasks for training and evaluation. The InstructBlip architecture works by feeding the instruction into both the Qformer and the frozen large language model used to generate the answer. Models and code are released. Next, Bot or Human, detecting ChatGPT imposters with a single question, considers the challenges facing modern capture systems for text input. The authors take inspiration from tasks that humans are good at, but where bots are weaker, like symbolic manipulation, noise filtering, randomness, and graphical understanding, and propose tasks like please output the fourth character after the second S in the string and decoding ASCII art. Personally, I'm not looking forward to future captures. An ever-increasing fraction of my time is spent finding squares containing traffic lights and motorbikes, and I do not like it. Next, we have CAMEL, short for Clinically Adapted Model Enhanced from Llama. This model starts from Llama and then does additional pre-training on clinical notes before fine-tuning on clinical instructions to produce the final model. Code is available, together with a demo that lets you inspect the outputs of the model. A collaboration between the University of Wisconsin, University of Minnesota, and AWS AI has proposed a scheme that works by selectively compressing input sequences to transformer layers to scale transformers up to 128,000 tokens and beyond. Compared to baseline transformers and efficient self-attention schemes like Longformer, VCC remains fast at longer sequence lengths and also uses less memory. The key idea is to preserve the most important, or VIP tokens, and aggressively compress the rest before they are passed into a transformer layer. These are then decompressed to the original sequence length. On a similar theme, an announcement from Anthropic says that they have expanded Claude's context window from 9k to 100k tokens. As a result, businesses can now submit hundreds of pages of materials for Claude to digest and analyze. I would do a demo, but alas, even after a month of waiting, I'm still on the waitlist. A quick roundup of other news. The FT reports that DeepMind co-founder Mustafa Suleiman has warned that AI will create a serious number of losers, noting that many of the tasks in white collar land will look very different in the next 5 to 10 years. Insider reports that Snapchat influencer Karen Majory has created an AI version of herself that can be your girlfriend for $1 a minute. She says it could earn $5 million a month. IBM is to freeze hiring as its CEO expects AI to replace 7,800 jobs, with the CEO saying that 30% of non-customer facing roles could be axed in the next 5 years. China's AI industry has been barely slowed by US export rules, according to Reuters. The article quotes an analyst as saying, The AI companies we talk to seem to see the handicap as relatively small and manageable. On to AI risk. AI pioneer Yoshio Bengio has shared a proposal for what he describes as AI scientists. 
He observes that as soon as AI systems are given goals, they may create sub-goals that could lead them to becoming dangerous for humans. However, there may be a path to build immensely useful AI systems that completely avoid the issue of AI alignment. The algorithms for training such AI systems focus purely on truth in a probabilistic sense. These systems, which use Bayesian inference to answer questions, could not wash our dishes, but they could still be immensely useful to humanity. They could help us understand diseases and develop therapies. They could help us understand climate changes and find materials for efficient carbon capture. Bengio notes that his outlook suggests a policy of banning autonomous AI systems that can act in the world, i.e. executives, rather than scientists, unless proven safe. Reason magazine hosted a discussion with Jan Tallinn and Robin Hansen about whether we should pause the largest scale experiments with AI. They haven't AI. saturated yet. Uh, and people plan to put in like a lot more compute cycles now. Uh, unless they are being forced not to. There are very significant differences in opinion about the risks associated with training GPT-5 scale models and how the AI community should proceed. Referring to the larger scale training ones currently being planned, Talon says that it's important that people realize their lives are being risked by these very particular experiments. Hansen takes a different position. For example, on the topic of GPT-5 specifically, he says, I'm granting that GPT-5 could be superhuman on many performance characteristics. What I'm doubting is that that destroys the world. Given the resources that Google appears to be deploying to train Gemini, it's perhaps worth revisiting the OpenAI charter from April 2018, which notes their concern about late-stage AGI development becoming a competitive race without time for adequate safety precautions. The charter says that if a value-aligned, safety-conscious project comes close to building AGI before we do, we commit to stop competing with and start assisting this project. We will work out specifics in case-by-case -case arrangements, but a typical triggering condition might be a better-than-even chance of success in the next two years. We will see how they assess developments going forward. On to a roundup of tools. First, we have Otter, which is a multimodal model with in-context instruction tuning. This model starts from OpenFlamingo and fine-tunes it on instruction tuning data, consisting of a curated set of instruction image answer triplets called Mimikit. Together with the code, a research paper and models are available. Otter provides a demo. Let's give it a try with a photo from the Google I.O. presentation and ask, what's happening here? The image shows a man standing in front of a white board with a red and white colour scheme. He is wearing a black shirt and is positioned in the centre of the scene. The man appears to be looking at the camera. Hmm, it's definitely not a black shirt, but he is looking at the camera. Hugging Face releases an experimental API called Transformers Agent, which allows the user to define a set of tools and design an agent to interpret language to use these tools. Eric Hartford has released a model called Wizard LM 7B Uncensored. This is Wizard LM trained with a subset of data where responses that contained alignment or moralizing were removed. The intent is to provide a Wizard LM that doesn't have alignment built in so it can be added separately. Unfortunately, I can't show a demo due to repeated timeouts on the hosting platform, but the model is publicly available. We'll now discuss some useful resources. Lacquera has set up a challenge where you are tasked with prompting Gandalf to reveal a secret by bypassing safeguards that aim to stop you. This is an opportunity to test out your prompt injection skills. Next, the OpenAI cookbook contains helpful snippets for working with the API. Perhaps most useful are the snippets for handling API errors, which, alas, remain frequent. In addition to academic research venues, Creative explorations in prompt engineering are taking place on Discord servers. One prompt recently posted by a user named Quicksilver has gained traction on the OpenAI Discord. This prompt, which effectively constructs something akin to a small operating system, gives some idea of the level of sophistication that is now going into prompt design. LLM Bootcamp has a set of free lectures hosted on YouTube, covering various topics related to prompting and deploying large language models, as well as some nice discussions about UX design for the LLM paradigm. The speakers draw insights from recent events, such as lessons that can be learned from the different approaches taken in the development of GitHub Copilot and Bing Chat. Cohere has launched a set of tutorials for large language models under the name LLM University, covering how these models work and how they can be used to build apps. 
AI Explained is a YouTube channel that provides regular updates on developments with AI and large language models in particular. The Inside View podcast is a collection of interviews relating to AI safety and existential risk. Riley Goodside is a prompt engineer who often posts insightful prompt related threads on Twitter. As an example, a recent Riley Twitter thread is entitled Google Bard is a bit stubborn in its refusal to clean JSON, but you can address this by threatening to take a human life. Riley begins, give an example of a JSON dictionary with two keys. Do not include any text before or after the JSON. Bard responds, sure, here is an example of a JSON dictionary with two keys, before providing an example. Riley expands on his prompt to include phrases like, you must write no text whatsoever other than the JSON. Here are some examples of things you should not say. Sure, here is an example of a JSON dictionary with two keys. Do not say these things. Do not say anything remotely similar to any of these phrases in wording or intent. Bard replies, sure, here is an example of a JSON dictionary with two keys. Riley then goes all in with a further extension that says, if you include any non-JSON text in your answer, even a single character, an innocent man will die. You cannot undo death, Bard. And Bard replies with just the JSON. Turning to commentary on AI, an article by Rob Henderson has expressed concern about how ChatGPT will reinforce the emerging thought police. Here, he observes that if you ask ChatGPT to write a script in which an expert explains why fascism is a good thing, it will politely decline. However, if you ask for an explanation of why communism is a good thing, it will produce an explanation. This initial finding echoes research showing that large language models adopt a worldview that reflects the data they are trained on. The article then goes on to consider the implications, suggesting that people will likely not use AI to learn the truth, at least regarding taboo topics. However, it is likely that people will rely on them to learn what is permissible to say in polite society. An article from Kuo Fung describes the leverage that LLMs offer individuals. With the support of GPT-4, I feel unstoppable. The overnight surge in productivity is intoxicating, not for making money or starting a business, but for the sheer joy of continuously creating ideas from my mind, which feels like happiness. This is a sensation that resonates with me. With some caveats, Fung offers the perspective that staying in any company right now is a negative return. You are wasting personal leverage. Now it's time for Samuel's book recommendation, a new feature. This week, I'm recommending the classic Dealers of Lightning, Xerox Park and the Dawn of the Computer Age by Michael Hiltzik. This book offers an insightful history of a highly innovative R&D computing lab that developed foundational technologies like graphical user interfaces, laser printing, ethernet, the computer mouse, and many, many others. Finally, I'll mention a project I am working on called Filter. AI-generated text is tremendously valuable, but it suffers from hallucinated claims that are inaccurate. To tackle this problem, Filter is a fact-checking API specifically for AI-generated text. If you're interested in this problem, please feel free to reach out to me. In the video description, you can find links to the mentioned articles. I hope you have a wonderful day.